Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, Finch built his very first alliance with the Forest Colony. So now all of their territory is free for us to roam, and free for us to go hunting in as well. We spent some time by the fairy wood to hunt down doves, and of course to get tons of mews in the process. But as you can see, I went on a little bit of a shopping spree over the past few days. A lot of you agreed that we should save up our mews for the shopkeeper, so I went ahead and did just that. And that means that outside today, we have somebody very, very special from Finch's past waiting for him in the Highlands. We had quite a bit of free territory in the southern portions, so I thought it would be the best place for somebody new to set up camp. And little Starling, Finch's brother, has decided to join us in our adventures, probably because he heard about all of those crystals, of course. How are you today? Pockets feeling heavy, paws feeling light. Now he does look quite a bit different from the last time we saw him, and that's because we can't actually get our paws on his true coat color. Starling's was unique to Scouts and Penny's children, so we can't bring it over to Finch's save file. But I think it kind of fits his character a bit more, that he would dye his fur all sorts of different colors, maybe even to match the different seasons. He was always a little artist after all. Tell me about yourself, Finch. Do you like the rain or find it annoying like I do? Oh, I wonder if Starling's interests may have changed over the years. Maybe some of the things he used to like aren't really his favorites anymore. He does seem like a very fickle sort of cat. Every time it starts sprinkling, I have to run and grab all my merchandise and haul it inside the den so it doesn't get all wet. Yeah, I felt like a shopkeeper would actually be the best occupation for him, at least for somebody inside our colony, because now we can bring him all sorts of treasures from around the world, and when we sell them off, we could say that perhaps he's storing them away to use them in future art projects. But I'm really excited to see what he has inside his store, so I've got everything you could ever need. Yeah, do you have anything special? I mean, it was very expensive to get our hands on this trading post, so surely he has some special things that we could buy. The orange cream color? Oh, that looks super cute. I wonder if that would look good on Starling in the future, too. We have the ruddy color, the zebra color, the umber color, pink tabby, regal... Oh, all of these things would look so good on Starling. We should definitely try to save up for some uh, extra special coat colors. That way he has a few to choose from. He has the traditional style, and he also has the Highland style. Oh my gosh, how perfect is that? Looks like pine trees and fallen logs. And then this looks like an eastern village. Oh, both of those sound really interesting. And they're actually not that expensive. So maybe we should try to save up for these next. I mean, it's the Highland style. We have to get that for our Highland Lake. I bet that would look really good for Finch's Den. But I decided to give Starling the crystals, of course. Because he always did love to go mining. So let's see if we can find a good gift for him. Back when we were just kittens growing up in Penny's den, he loved different types of flowers. So perhaps we could try the valerian first. See what he thinks of this stuff. Actually, his eye color matches the valerian now. Oh, is he a little bit embarrassed? I'll uh, just set this over here in the back. He's blushing. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe he doesn't want anyone to know that he really likes Valerian. I kind of felt the same about Claudius, because we did try to give him Valerian one time and he absolutely hated it. And I figured it was probably because he thought that we were maybe treating him like a slower cat, since the Valerian does give you a bit of a speed boost. But let's try the rabbits. Hey, thanks, I appreciate it. All right, so he likes the rabbits a little bit more. That's good to take note of. Yeah, Claudius mentioned that he really loves the uh, sights and the smells of spring. All of the flowers that sprout up after these springtime showers. So I think what we might do is move some of the valerian that we have inside Galen's Grove and plant it over by Claudius's den instead. I think he would appreciate it. 
That way, he would be able to choose when he wants to use the Valerian during his duties, and he won't feel like Finch is forcing these herbs on him. Usually, our guards prefer to keep a couple extra in their back pocket, so this will be assurance for him and assurance for us as well. It's kind of fitting that we're doing a little bit of decorating around here anyway now that Starling has joined. I bet he's going to want to give this entire place just like the biggest makeover. And I wouldn't mind to be honest. If we could get some more Muse, we might be able to buy some more walls. Maybe he could help construct an area for Claudius to train. Or even that a garden for Griffin. Oh, Griffin is not going to be happy that he has a new neighbor. He thought he was all safe and secluded down in the southern portions of the territory. But Starling can be quite the little chatterbox. Quite the singer, too. If I remember correctly, he used to love to make up songs inside the den. So it'll be interesting to see if these two get along. But here's a lovely frog to share with you today, Griffin. Oh, for me? That's kind of cool, I guess. What's up, Finch? Hey, if you ever bump into a foreign cat that's looking for someone that looks and sounds suspiciously like me, don't tell them about me. Uh, not that they're actually looking for me, of course. I've just got a doppelganger out there somewhere. Yeah, that sounds legitimate. I'd buy that. Okay, Griffin. It sounds like he might be trusting us a little bit more after all. Just a tiny, tiny bit anyway. Not enough to actually tell us what he may have done out in that big wide world, but enough to let us know that if danger does come knocking on our door, it might be because somebody is uh, looking for him. It really does make me wonder what caused him to get up and leave his old life. I hope he didn't cause too much trouble for himself, because then I'm sure the Feather Colony is going to be under attack. Oh, I wonder if maybe that's part of the reason why Leo has been pushing into our territory? Maybe he has a little bit of a past with Griffin too? Or it could always be somebody from the Forest Colony, because the forest is super far away from the Highlands. So maybe he would want to go somewhere where nobody would remember him. Nobody would know who he is. We'll have to keep our eyes peeled as we go into our battles today. Maybe one of our guards, or maybe even one of our enemies, will provide us with a little bit of a clue to his background. But first, I do want to try to catch this extra frog if we can. It's right on the cliffside, so even if we ended up missing it, I'm sure we would have been able to scoop it up. Now, can we upgrade any of our skills, perhaps, before we do go charging into battle? We have foraging available, but it might actually be a better idea to upgrade one of our current skills. You know, the lion's roar is actually super, super helpful. We've been using that a lot lately to scare away the uh, big swarms of guards. So let's try to upgrade this one. That way it'll be a little bit easier for us to use that in the future if it has a shorter cooldown. Now all of our battles are right in front of the quarry. So something tells me that we're going to be fighting the Mystic Colony today. Let's go ahead and eat some of our delicious berries to prepare. And then I think we're ready to just charge straight into battle. Yep, it's the Mystic Colony again. And it looks like there are quite a few, but our guards are definitely getting stronger. The Feather Colony is becoming a force to be reckoned with. And we're proving ourselves every day by winning these skirmishes. So let's see who managed to survive that one. I think there are a couple of cats back here. We have Gizmo. I know some cats hate the water, but I love to swim. The water feels nice. I think Griffin was one of the ones who didn't really enjoy the rain. Or did he like the rain? It was the snow that he didn't like, right? He didn't like the colder weather because, unfortunately, that would bury all of his delicious frogs and toads. But he might like the rain because that would bring more out from hiding, right? So if he likes to watch them hopping around, or if he just wants to uh, maybe munch on a few, then he always has the opportunity. But let's go ahead and hunt down these cats with our colony. Everyone's feeling a little bit slow. Oh my goodness, the mountain is getting in on this one too. Pepper was actually one of Leo's reinforcements. Oh, they must have been scouting on the outskirts. But unfortunately, the Mystic Colony noticed them. Maybe they were even trying to sneak into the quarry. Oh, we actually have some guards right outside the entrance. 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and scoop up this lavender to spread it around here, because that'll at least uh, chip away at the Mystic Colony's control. So they no longer own the quarry. But I think Bubba might own that mouse. Well, let's get rid of you before we try to catch the uh, harvest mouse again. Or the field mouse, rather. So we might take that home for Starling. Oh, I think I heard our cats fighting up here again. Were there more reinforcements? There definitely was. Well, we'll scoop up those mews. What do you want? Get out of my way. I'm on an important errand. An errand for us, maybe, Racer? Oh my gosh, is that any way to speak to your leader? Maybe that's the cat who's trying to hunt down Griffin? Somebody's spying in our midst, looking for this mysterious individual who disappeared from their homelands. I can't imagine that any other feather colony cat would be so disrespectful. Well, we're not going to give him any clues. If he doesn't know where Griffin is hiding, then we're going to keep him under wraps. In fact, I think we might want to use our muse to buy more of those walls for him. Maybe we could actually make him a bit of a more secluded area. Not only for his snake lily garden, but just to uh, give him a place to hide. That way, if those enemies do come sneaking up to our borders, he can pretend like he's not even there. He's been helping us out a lot recently by giving us little gifts of herbs and whatnot just to kind of assure himself that we're not going to fall in battle. So I feel like we need to repay the favor. We need to find a way to show that we are just as thankful that he decided to stick around for us. Honestly, it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that so many of you have been looking forward to Finch and Griffin potentially getting together in the future. He is one of the uh, marriageable cats. Okay, Socks, I was just about to pour poem, but I guess we're going to have to take care of you first. Yeah, we don't know how Finch is going to get along with uh, the other marriageable cats. And I will wait to make a decision, of course, until we meet each and every one. But I have to say, I am loving the ship name that you guys chose for them. A lot of you are calling them Grinch, which just makes me smile every single time I read it. That is just the perfect name for them. Now, hopefully today is going to be a bit brighter. It looks like it's sunny outside, so Starling, I'm sure, is going to be very, very happy. Now he can enjoy exploring the highlands when uh, the rain isn't beating down around him. And maybe he could help us out with the decorating too, just like we were planning. Hello, Starling. Are you feeling a bit better today? How are you today? Pockets feeling heavy, paws feeling light. It's important to always keep learning, even after you think you've learned everything there is to know about something. The world is always changing, and that means there's always something new to learn. Oh, that's actually really fitting coming from him. He was kind of like our little prodigy child. He uh, leveled up very, very quickly when Penny was taking him all around the world. But I guess that's why he decided to go out adventuring in the end, because he knew that there would always be something more for him to learn. So let's try the miracle today. Oh my gosh, darling. Oh, I don't think he likes flowers anymore, guys. What? Have I ever been this rude to you? Some cats these days. I'm so sorry, Starling. When we were just kids, you used to love these flowers. Well, maybe the doves will remind you of home? I hope we're not going to give him, like, all of his most hated gifts. Now, it looks like he liked that one. I knew you were a clever one, Finch. These are great, thanks. All right, so he likes to be reminded of Penny Cat by enjoying all of those delicious birds, but no more flowers. We are not going to give him any more of those. Yeah, I guess his tastes must have just uh, changed over the years. Let's make a deal. What have you brought to me today? Well, we have some extra food that you could keep inside your den. I'm not really sure what you would use these for in art projects. Maybe the scales of the fish could provide a shiny little ingredient for your next project. But with all of those mews, we should have enough to hopefully buy some more of those walls. So we can get to work constructing a safe area for Griffin to hide away in. So Coco, if you wouldn't mind, we're going to visit your shop next. Let's see how many of these we can buy. Oh, we actually can't buy very many at all. Maybe we should wait until we have 50 then so we can get that pack of five. That might be a good idea. Maybe, in fact, one of our other cats will have a little gift to give us. 
Oh, a southern damselfly. How on earth did you get your paws on this, Claudius? It's not the most expensive item. We won't really get that many mews from uh, selling it off to Starling, but at least it's something. Every little bit counts out here. Oh, Griffin, now he's sharing his frogs with us? Well, you know what, Griffin? I think we're going to munch on this right away. We were getting a little bit hungry after all. And we'll go ahead and share one of our freshly caught frogs with you too. And Galen, I suppose you will be happy to know that all of our herbs are going to stay in your corner from now on. The other cats don't seem to appreciate them quite as much. You are no doubt wondering why I came to your colony in the first place, aren't you? An enigmatic wandering doctor who simply chooses to settle in at an empty den in the middle of a land far from their home. And yet, some mysteries may never be revealed, no matter how much we wish they were. Well, that's very sneaky, Galen. Getting us all excited to hear about your grand past, but withholding it nonetheless. Maybe he'll be willing to open up a little bit more to Griffin. Maybe they can exchange their deep backstories if they promise to keep it a secret. But I suppose a couple more battles ought to do the trick. So let's see where all of our enemies are waiting today. Over by the prairie again, okay. This one right here might actually be a battle between all three of our colonies again, if we're lucky. That might actually, oh my goodness, Finch. Oh my gosh, did you see that? He practically jumped off the screen. Yeah, he definitely did not get that mouse. That mouse is long gone now, but at least we know you're full of energy today. Bringing a brand new meaning to the feather colony. I know you're named after a bird, little one, but you're not actually meant to go flying. Well, let's head down to the first of our battles before he decides to do anything crazy. We have all of our skills at the ready again, so hopefully this will be enough to take care of the mountain. We do have a lot of guards today, but it might not be enough. I think they actually took them all out. Oh, we're actually getting super, super low on health too. Go ahead and gobble up all of those marigolds, and then maybe you can weave your way through your enemies to pick up those mews while you heal. We do have an extra little golden seal waiting on the outskirts, and we can always call in some more reinforcements, but I feel like uh, Finn should be able to take care of these. It's only two cats, and he's had to fight much bigger battles on his own. So another swipe for Patches, and now we're just down to Whiskers. Let's see how much health he has left. Oh, he actually doesn't hit us very hard, so we might be able to just take him out. Excellent, and now the Prairie North is completely ours. I see that our reputation is starting to drop with the forest, so we might want to take another trip down there soon but we'll save that for another day. We have plans with Starling after all, and we don't want to risk getting back too late when he might be asleep and unwilling to help us decorate the colony. We don't have our deep cut skill anymore, but we can potentially scare away these cats. That way they'll be much easier for us to pick off. Do we only have these two little twins left? We have Hunter and Moonbeam? Yeah, I guess that was all that the Mystic Colony sent out for this battle. Well, we won't complain. That means, uh... Oh no, more reinforcements. It sucks again. Oh, you just don't want to leave us alone, do you, little one? Well, we'll go ahead and scoop up these ladybugs, if you don't mind. And then we'll warp back home. Because now we should have enough to at least buy some more of those walls. I think we do actually have some leftover from our previous experiments when we were building a Galen's Grove over here. And we might have to break into your herb stash again, Galen, because we are starting to run a little bit low. But let's go ahead and buy that nice big pack of walls, five more to work with, and then we'll go into our build menu so we can get to work with Starling. It might be a good idea for us to move Claudius's den up a little bit more. So he's in a uh, bit of a more opportune area. That way he can defend himself, hide behind those bushes, just in case the enemies do come rolling in. I do like that he's situated right next to the outskirts of the territory. That way we know he's always watching. But we're going to focus on Griffin for now. So let's move his den a little bit further up. 
maybe over here, right on the edge of the territory, just like Galen's is above him. And we can drop some extra walls in right over here, so he has a little bit more space to hide within. I wonder if we should make the entrance to his den even sneakier? Just like block off this entire area? Yeah, that way you have to really go around to find Griffin. I think he'll appreciate that. We don't have quite enough walls to make his snake lily garden, but it is definitely a good start. And I feel like that quiet corner fits his character a bit more. Now let's go ahead and give a little starling some more crystals to play around with. We'll plop this one right next to all of his treasures. And then I believe one of the styles will give us this box, which might be particularly fitting since he is our little shopkeeper. We could put it uh, right next to this tree maybe? I suppose that might look nice, as if this is where he's keeping all of his wares. It reminds me a bit of Ember too. I believe he had some boxes right outside his shop, so it's almost like he's following in the footsteps of our very, very old friend. I think that's pretty good for now though. And now I'm just excited to buy some more styles for us to work with. Yeah, we definitely need to get our hands on the Highland style next. So that's what we're going to be saving up for. Now let me help you situate all of your items over here, Griffin. We'll make sure that we plop down your snake lilies right outside, so anybody who does happen to stumble into our territory might be deterred from knocking on your door. They'll see all of those poisonous plants, your crows out right in the doorway, and they'll probably head right in the other direction. Nah, I know you dropped that thing. You're just too polite to say otherwise, aren't you? Oh, he's talking about the frog from earlier. We actually uh, munched on that one right away, Griffin. It filled our bellies up quite well. So if you guys have any ideas for future decorations, or maybe special places for us to make for each of these cats, then definitely let me know. That has to be one of my favorite parts of setting up our own colony. Just uh, making it feel a little bit more like Finch's home. A little bit more unique to him and all of the cats that he's invited. We'll save up all of our muse for the Highland style next. But it is getting very close to the Spring Festival. So I'm looking forward to seeing what other new things are going to be waiting there for us too. I'm kind of tempted to save up for some sort of fur style instead. That way we can give Starling a brand new look for the summer. I know we didn't have too many more of those tokens left to work with, because unfortunately the styles can be pretty expensive. So we might have to wait for a couple of rounds before we can buy all the things. But I certainly don't mind. Finch is really enjoying himself here, and I think he's doing a pretty good job pulling it together as a leader. So in the next episode, we'll see if we can get our hands on the Highland style. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!